the average Joe, this is called pain. But in physics, it's called inertia, also known as momentum. An object in motion shall remain in motion. Now, it needs no introduction at all in the real world, but it does not really take off. never really shines until you get to the depths of outer space. Out here in the gravity-free, airless environment, momentum is used as both a tool and as a weapon. And in this perfect Newtonian environment, where physics rules, it is as good of a weapon as we could ever hope for. Momentum, for reasons which are unlikely to be made clear here, is represented in physics not by an M, but by a capital P. But no matter, it is simply equal to mass times velocity. And it is in this form is most famous for being one of the official Newtonian laws of motion, of which there are three. Number three, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For example, an action would be pushing to the left while the reaction would be suddenly finding yourself flying through the air to the right. Happens all the time. Number two. The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. It's just a long-winded way of saying that a small force will get you a small acceleration, whereas a large force will get you a large acceleration. Which brings us to number one. An object in motion shall remain in motion until acted upon by an outside force. And in space, this is where the fun begins. An object in motion shall remain in motion. Once you get going, you stay going. And going. And going. And the gift of momentum is that in space, once you get going, there is almost nothing that can stop you. There's no air, no wind, nothing to resist you at all. It's just your momentum, your mass, and your velocity. And once you achieve your velocity, you're free to maneuver in any which way you wish in manners unthinkable in an atmosphere. Wow, this is more like it. Such as upside down, sideways, and if all else fails, utterly backwards. As long as your velocity remains constant, physics has absolutely no complaint. And why should it? For the first law of motion rules anything that happens in outer space. But it doesn't rule alone. In the midst of all this excitement, there is another law which we also must obey. A law of potentially dangerous consequences. The conservation of momentum is concerned with collisions. Specifically, the momentum before a collision is supposed to equal the momentum after a collision. But this is frequently ignored. We like to coddle a prejudice that says once something dies, it stops. And that just is not the case. Once you are moving, you are moving. Nobody asks momentum whether you're alive or dead. And that's just the half of it. According to this conservation, the momentum before has to equal the momentum after. But the catch is momentum doesn't care whether you're in one piece or 50 smithereens. Each smithereen still has its share of the total momentum. Each smithereen still has its velocity and each smithereen is still moving. And the bigger the explosion, the more of them that are moving. And the more of them that are moving, the more of them hit you. And now we get to ask ourselves, what would happen if some ingenious somebody realized that they could use this phenomenon as a weapon? Not 
quite the safest way to learn a lesson, but no one ever said that physics was harmless. If you can't take a little bloody nose, maybe you ought to go back home and crawl under your bed. It's not safe out here. It's wondrous. But it's not for the timid. Yes, momentum is the true double-edged sword. On one hand, it is dangerous, easily able to be turned against either you or your opponent. But on the other, space travel would be virtually impossible without it, not to mention without the other two laws of motion. So we have to take the good with the bad. And if all else fails, enjoy the show.